So in this section of the video, we're going to start to focus on exploits in our PLC. So we've set up our PLC controller, on our Raspberry Pi, we've set up um, my factory IO, and we've set up a SCADA. So I've got all of these virtual machines running in the background. Next, I'm going to download and install Kali. So Kali is a Unix-based Unix machine made by Fancy Security, and it comes with lots of tools that we can use for um, pen testing. So go to Kali.org, click on download. Okay, there's many different images you can download. So you've got 64-bit with the installer. This will install to run on the local hard drive, or you can run it live off a USB or another folder on the desktop. Um, you can also download to run within your virtual machines. Yeah, so select your version you should download and then begin your download. Once the download is finished, just do a standard install. Also download to run within. So if you look at the applications we have on here, so you've got information gathering, okay, you've got password, database management, you've got wireless attacks, okay, as well as exploitation tools. So this toolkit is often given to our university students for them to begin to work through on their security MSC. So offensive security has put this package together. Okay, and most of the tools we want come provided. Now there are some tools that are outside of this that we'll need to install. Okay, so during this um, video, I'm going to show you how to ARP spoof, so how to so how to uh, mimic an IP address that someone's using, and how to capture packets using Wireshark. We're then going to use Metasploit to begin to exploit some of the Modbus commands. So there's a communication happening between the PLC, Factory IO, and the SCADA BR. So before we begin, I'm connected this device to the internet, so we're on a shared network. I require internet access. So I'm going to open up a terminal window, and I'm just going to install a dsniff. So I'm going to do super user do, apt install, and then dsniff. Now dsniff is a package of tools. Um, ARP spoof used to be a part of Kali until recent versions where it was removed. So we just need to install that. So I'll give you a password. Okay, and then I'll go ahead and begin to download and then install. Okay, so now I'm done, I can disconnect from my ISP and I can now connect to my host-only network. This is the same network I've got everything else running. So what I can begin to do is if I do super user do, and then I can do ARP spoof, and then I'm gonna start with the IP address for my controllers. So I'm going to do the IP address 192.168.0.89. And what this does is this will now start to receive any information that is destined for that IP address. So open a new terminal. I'm now going to, as a super user, run Wireshark. Okay, Wireshark is a packet sniffing tool. So now I've told my, IP, my network card to begin to pull traffic in for the IP address 192.168.0.89. When I look at the, the Ethernet, I'm able to then look at the destination addresses. So these are all the packets that are destined for that IP address. So I scroll down, there's lots and lots of traffic. Um, packets are number 64. PCs are so loud. Okay, so let's um, filter by what we want. So we can filter by IP address. Okay, and then I can check is the IP address equal to 192.168.0.114, for example. So I can see data passing between a particular host. Yeah, so there's some Modbus commands. I can do it on my SCADA. Yeah, so again, even on my SCADA, I've got some Modbus commands passing back and forth between the SCADA and the destination. Yeah. And I can filter by protocol. So I'm going to filter by Modbus. Okay, so these are all the Modbus packets. Now, I currently have 260 packets, so I'm going to stop there oh, because I have plenty of things I can begin to start looking at. So, picking some random packets, if I expand the mod bus, if I can get a function code. Okay, so read, hold, and registers. So, um, discrete inputs, so we've got some inputs happening. Yes, yeah, so we can begin to get a feel for what's happening on this system. Okay, what kind of data is passing? So, we can see the source. So there's two main sources. So 192.168.0.7, that's my SCADA. Okay, and 192.168.0.114, that's my PLC. And then the .89 is my factory IO. So 
I, I have a destination, I have somewhere I'm interested in starting to look, so I'm going to begin to look at Modbus on that destination IP. And then we have some data, I'm just going to minimise Wireshark, and I'm going to minimise these for the moment. So I'm going to start a new terminal, so back to a new window, and I'm going to start to load a Metsploit, so MSF console. So I need to do this as a super user. Okay, MSF console. So MFS console is Megasploit, and this is um, a database, if you like, of known vulnerabilities and exploits for systems. It's quite generic, and it has great search functionality, so we're able to search for particular exploits. So once this is loaded, you'll get a header at the top, and this header here will tell you uh, the recent updates. Yeah, so we're on version 30, we're development 30, and we've got these, these exploits and evasions we can look at. So we're going to search for Modbus. Okay, this brings up the Modbus commands that I can run on this PC. So the different exploits that are available from Modbus. So the few things we need to do. So we've got an IP address that we suspect is running Modbus. Running Modbus headers, so that's .89. So we can begin to detect Modbus headers. So let's start with that. So if we look down the bottom here, so if we look at number six, so let's use auxiliary, scan, SCADA, and then Modbus. Then we're going to do Modbus detect. Okay, so we have a function called show options. And what show options does, this tells me what's required before I can run any of the exports. So to be able to run this export, I need to be able to provide with remote host. Remote port is set by 502 on default. And the unit ID, so this is the identifier. Again, this is a default set to one. So I'm going to set my R host. I guess it's 192.168.0.89. Now, if you've set your port on your PLC and your factory IO to 503, then you'll need to change the R port here as well. So once you've configured that, we can click on exploit. What this will do is this will probe with a 502 packet and it will determine whether or not it receives a correct Modbus header. Okay, in this instance, it does. Great, so we've been able to detect that this IP address is running Modbus. Now what we want to do is we want to find the unit ID. So unit IDs work in a similar way to IP addresses that allows us to identify and talk to a particular PLC within a network. So let's go to use Accelerate, Scanner, Strata, and then Modbus, yeah, and then find unit by ID. So again, let's do show options. And this lists down the options. So again, this tells us what we need to include. Okay, so um, we've got the time between each station probe, we've got the remote host, remote port, we've got a timeout, and then the unit we're going to start from. So start from one and finish at 254. Now if it takes one second per probe, 254 is going to take quite some time to complete. So let's set this to five for the moment. Yeah, so let's set unit ID two and then five. And I'm going to set the R host to my remote host. So that's 192.168.0.89. Okay, show options to make sure I have everything configured. Yep, so one second, wait. I've got my host address and I've set the units to search from one to five. So let's begin our exploit. So this will now try and identify station IDs within that IP range connected to that device. Okay, so we've got a, we've got a positive return. So we've got a correct Modbus TCP station ID one. Okay, so we'll need the station ID to be able to communicate with the Modbus. And we're able to confirm that the IP address 192.168.0.89 is running a Modbus header. Our station ID, we've got our IP. So now let's look at Modbus client. So use its auxiliary. And then we're going to do Modbus client. Okay, so from the Modbus client, what we're able to do is we're able to read coils, read registers, write coils right registers so we're able then to see quite a lot more of what's happening within our plc so if we go to show options okay so we have a few options that we need to set so they're required and a few additional options that aren't 
so required. So let's start off by reading some registers. So first thing we need to do is we need to set up our remote host. So we're going to use the term set our host 192.168.0.89. We're going to set our data address. This is where I'm going to start. Yes, yeah, so we set data address to zero. So I'll start from address location zero. And I'm going to set an action. So I'm going to set an action to read. Okay, and I'm going to read the holding registers. Now, currently, because the number is set to one, this will only read the first register. So it'll read register location zero. I want to read the first five. So I'm going to set the number to five. That will return the first five registers, starting from zero, finishing at four. So if I run exploit, what this has done is sent a read registers. Okay, it's pulled back zero from five, uh, zero to five. So we have zero, seven, zero, zero, zero. Okay, and that executed correctly. And this represents over here on this board. Again, I can do the same thing, I can read coils. So if I set action to read coils. Okay, and I'm gonna use the same detail. So I'm gonna read the first five coils starting from zero. Okay, so we've got two coils. We know we have two coils on this on this software. Okay, um, and these coils will change depending upon where we are within the program. So at the moment we've got a zero and a one. Okay, once the pump starts, we'll then get a one and zero. Yep, this just represents the different actuators. Okay, so we're able to read these values. Now let's look at how we might begin to exploit them. But we. Um, show options okay this is quite handy because it tells me what is set and what i haven't and if i'm not sure i can always use unset and then all and what that'll do is that'll rewrite or empty this table so show options that yeah, table's now empty so let's set our, our host again 192.168.0.89 Okay, I'm going to set my data address again to zero. Okay, um, I want to set the action to write to register. Okay, I want to set my data to 90. Okay, so I want to set port number zero, uh, register number zero to 90. So let's show options to make sure I've missed anything out. Okay, so I've set my data to 90. Okay, I've set my address to zero. Um, I'm going to go look at the one, the R host, and the unit number. So let's exploit. And what we're looking for is we're looking for the values over here to change to 90. Okay, so, run. so let's change our to set data address. Let's change that there to one and let's set that one there to 90 as well. Okay, so we can see that it's written a 90 there, it's, it doesn't hold the value. Now let's have a look at how we would exploit a coil. So let's do show options, just see what we've got configured. Okay, so let's do set action to write coil. Okay, let's set data to one. Okay, and let's set our data address to Let's do zero because that's just open, so we'll be able to fill that back up again. Okay, so if I click on exploit, what we should see is as a assembly in there a little bit. Is the water comes back on, we're now filling again. So we've just changed the state of that coil. Demo on how to read values, read coils write values to registers and write to coils. So give us a go on an example of your own.
see how you get on. You can always use Wireshark if you can't see multiple things running on the same screen. You can use Wireshark to track your packets. And so just keep it running in the background. You'll be able to see what's happening if you expand down on the Modbus. You'll see the function code of what's happening. And it's whether that's setting a value or reading a value. Okay, hope you enjoyed this video.